The guys with all the gun-free zones and you know federal buildings, courthouses, all the different areas that we can't carry a firearm or any kind of weapon, uh, whether it's a knife or pepper spray or whatever you know that you use for self-defense, we're going to look today at five different things that are very discreet that you can carry in almost anywhere. Now, one of the big things about carrying something is it needs to be discreet. Uh, if you're going through a metal detector, if you're going through some kind of checkpoint, or you know, even like the post office or places, government buildings where you're not supposed to be carrying any kind of weapon, including a knife. These are just five really discreet items that people typically carry. The flashlight's common. Uh, not everybody carries one, but a lot of people do. And there's good reasons to carry a flashlight. So that's one of the things to me that you can easily get away with. This is really too small with the small little flashlight, little pocket EDC light. It doesn't even come out from the hand. And of course, if you have really large hands, that could be an issue. Uh, there are some very thin, longer lights that would be probably a good choice. I just don't happen to have one here. Uh, but this is more of a medium-sized flashlight. And uh, this is, I believe, a jet beam. But you have just enough coming out to where you can use this and put your thumb at the back. Um, and so this gives you a little bit of added protection or a little bit of a, a tool to be able to use. Then here with this S2 baton, same thing. It just comes out enough, and yet this fits fairly easily in a pocket. Uh, it's a little bit larger than what I like to carry for EDC, but I know a lot of guys do carry this size. And it's according to what you do. Um, here we have one of the Enforce. Uh, this is just one of their, their lights. Uh, this is a great light, and it's very lightweight uh, with the polymer housing. But uh, this would also be a good tool as well. It does have the crenulated bezel, which gives you a little more effectiveness. And then here we have the Olight, and this is the M2T Warrior. It has the crenulated bezel as well. And so this just, again, gives you a little bit of added, just, <laughs> umph to your light. From what I understand, the flashlight is used more than any other tool for self-defense. Uh, and one thing is, a lot of times you've got a light on when you're looking around. Uh, you know, a lot of times, especially with those old mag lights with the D and C cell batteries, they were huge, they were heavy, they were great uh, to be used as a, a self-defense weapon. But here, even with this size light, the big thing is, is you want to just use it to points that can stop the attack. It'll distract them, it's painful, you know, in the head is good, in the throat, uh, in the side really excellent of course in the groin is definitely a place to be able to use this now, whether you have a crenulated bezel or not you're gonna have a lot of uh, just power with the light and of course with the batteries in here it gives it some heft and of course you can just shine the light in their face <laughs> as you're whopping them but obviously this light extends past my hand so that's one of the reasons why this makes it a good tool a lot of times with small EDC lights just like this little O light um, you know, it's not enough. Now, if I really grabbed hold of it, I could do some damage and at least give myself some assistance. But this is really more of a force multiplier. Now, there are some very aggressive bezels out on the market, but this would definitely be flagged uh, if you were carrying something like this. It is pretty large. Uh, but this is a Calaris XT11. And, uh, you know, for really serious things where I'm not really worried, I may be carrying a gun. I can carry this as well. And it just gives me a lot of capability. This M20X Warrior from Olight, uh, definitely again with the crenulated bezel. Uh, this you may be able to get away with, but it is getting on that large size. And honestly, guys, as I always say, light is your number one security tool. You're going to use a light more than any other tool for self-defense. Uh, it will, you know, illuminates the dark. And so a flashlight to me is one of your first lines of defense, regardless of the fact that you're carrying a firearm or a knife or some other, you know, pepper spray or whatever. Having a good flashlight to me is one of the most important tools to have. Now the belt, obviously it's just part of your apparel, it's part of what you wear. Um, you know, some guys don't wear belts, but if you're carrying concealed, you wear a belt and you need a good thick one. This is a Daltec Force uh, bull leather belt. I have had this thing for years and I have a number of them, I love them. Uh, but this is definitely something that you could use in a self-defense situation. Uh, you know, you may not have time to pull it off like you would some other things, but you definitely could get to it. Now, the big thing about the belt is, is you've got to get it off. And, uh, but you know, you don't know your situation. Sometimes you may have a little extra time. But being able to just wrap this around your hands, and you know, whether you have a sturdy belt or not, getting a good solid grip on this, and again, I would definitely consider 
wrapping it up like this. And of course, the bigger your waist, the more effective it's gonna be. But one of the big things is in case this is from an attack, whether it's a, a stick or a rod or a knife, you're able to get this up and you're able to block instead of using your forearm, which is natural. And so this is gonna be able to help deflect any kind of blow. But also, grabbing them by the throat, you can pull them close back this way, you can get them off of you. You know, if you need to, you can get them into a submission hold or, you know, if you need to really kind of make them pass out. But uh, definitely this can be used for a number of different things. And obviously you can use this buckle. And uh, it's one of the things I like about this belt in particular, because I can take this, wrap it around, man, you know, you're gonna, it's just another tool to be able to use. You know, one thing about this though, is they can actually grab it and pull it from your hand. Now, while a standard plastic or polymer pen can work, uh, you know, they can break fairly easily. Uh, but definitely in a pinch, you could use this. But there are so many different tactical pen options out on the market. But this one is a Fisher Space Pen. Now, it is made of aluminum, so it gives you a little bit more capability, uh, a little more strength. And so, while this is not necessarily a tactical pen, this could definitely be used. Some of these kind of cross the line, in my opinion. Uh, just like this small pen. This is one I got out of a battle box. But it kind of looks like some sort of weapon or tool. And uh, while that may be fine for you going every day just around, you know, there may be a, a problem if you go through some kind of checkpoint or, you know, you're going through a metal detector. You know, it does write, and you can show that, but a lot of times, you know, somebody might stop you. It does have a, a glass breaker carbide tip, and, um, you know, this is very effective. Uh, this one, to me, is probably the easiest to carry. This is a uh, Maxpedition. I don't know if they still make these, but it's a Maxpedition tactical pen. It looks more like a pen, but you have this end. You can get the flat end tip for it, uh, so that actually makes it a little less inconspicuous. But it does write, and uh, it's actually a good writing pen. Then we have the Boker. This is the SID Caliber 45. I really like this pen. Uh, it has like the, the bolt action right here and um, it clips right into your pocket. This is my EDC pen, and I really like this pen, but it gives you a lot of capability, again, in a self-defense situation. Now, this is one that I just ordered. It's actually a Rick Hinderer Knives. Uh, it's called the Extreme Duty Modular Pen, and uh, this is really a sweet option, but this is definitely more toward the lines of tactical looking. I mean, it looks like it could possibly be a weapon, and it makes it really effective. So this may or may not be something that passed the test getting through some kind of security. Of course, tactical pen, same thing as the flashlight. You grab hold of it. I get my thumb right here so it doesn't slide out of my hand. And then I can use it. Seems like the throat right here at the head. I mean, you start giving this guy some trouble and uh, they're going to back away. And so here we go again in the side. You can come down right here, right in the shoulder area. But anywhere where there's pressure points, and again, definitely groin is a really an objective in a lot of situations. Now, if you're a fan of the Bourne series, you've no doubt seen Jason Bourne use a magazine or a newspaper, I can't remember, as a self-defense tool. And this is what they call the millwork brick. Uh, this has been uh, taught to special ops and covert agents all over the world. And you take a magazine or a newspaper and you roll it up. So I typically take the spine, but a lot of people will take this in, but it seems to bind up this way. So just take it and make it as tight as you can. And so we'll just bring it in and then grab toward the low end. So you have an extended end here and you have a lower, shorter end here. And this is really hard. I mean, it makes it very hard. Uh, if you're using this end, it can bend and break, especially on maybe a newspaper. It's amazing that a newspaper will do this, but you just get those fibers really compact, and it makes a great self-defense tool, especially for a hammer fist. And this is something that you can slip into the back of your pocket. You may not want to carry a gun magazine, <laughs> but definitely something, you know, you could just wrap this up and slide it in your back pocket. Nobody would think any differently. Now the big thing about using a magazine, newspaper, or whatever is to just make sure you have about a fist full length right here at the end. Uh, not in the center necessarily, but get enough to where it really gets tight down here on the edge. This is very effective, <laughs> which is surprising to me, but 
again, special forces and all kind of covert agents have used this and known about this for a long time. Really makes that a solid surface. Again, same thing to the head. And it's used more as a hammer fist, bringing it back like this. One of the problems with going this way, and you can imagine, is that it can collapse, it can bend. And then you're gonna lose a lot of the power and a lot of the effectiveness. So, not really necessarily like in the chest, but on the sides, you know, you can use this in the throat, again, with the head and in the groin. I mean, it's perfect. One thing though to be careful of is when you are doing this, is to make sure that it's a good follow through. So when you're bringing it, just like you're gonna go all the way through their head, just gives you a lot of force. It's one of the martial arts techniques for years, bringing it through the force, just bringing it all the way through. You can use this end if you need to, because one of the problems is you're coming from this angle. You're kind of doing a backhand hammer fist. But if you need to go straight in, you can use this, especially in the groin. This would definitely be effective. Now, last but certainly not least, we have an umbrella or a cane, walking stick, something like that, even a trekking pole. But really, one of the big things about an umbrella like this is that you have a, uh, it's just a long, solid rod. It's not one of the collapsible types. There are some umbrellas out there like this that are actually very sturdy and can double as an effective self-defense tool, even more than this standard umbrella. But you get the point. Of course, some of those are pretty expensive. Uh, I know there are some walking sticks that actually have a sword inside, and those are pretty well known, so I'd be careful using something like that. But, uh, you know, this is definitely something you could use. The collapsible type, you know, they can come undone, and that could be an issue, but it can still be used. Now, the umbrella is carried when it's raining or there's rain in the forecast, so this may be somewhat limited, uh, but it could be something you could have around. Uh, but having the full-size umbrella is the best. Uh, the little collapsible umbrellas can be used, but they can deploy and, you know, it can just get kind of crazy. Uh, but that can also be used as well. But there are some really good, solid umbrellas that are better than others. And, you know, you can do some research to see which one's best for you. But the same thing with this is with a lot of things, is going for those pressure points. You know, I mean, you can use it to, to get an attacker off of you and disorient them and be able to get away. Uh, I'll tell you guys, you're using this tool uh, mainly just to make the attacker say, this is not an easy prey. Definitely an umbrella for a lot of different purposes, you know, and of course with the reach of an umbrella, you've got a little more to get back from someone. Same points apply, groin, sides, throat, head, right here in the stomach with this would be a good one. Uh, you can knock the wind out of them. But this also applies to a walking stick or a cane. Uh, if you're carrying one, you know, you maybe have a trekking pole if you're, you know, out on the trail and you can use that as well. But if you're out on the trail, typically you should have a firearm and possibly a knife. But places that where you can't have those kind of things, uh, you know, maybe a state park that doesn't allow for firearms. And so having something on you is just critical. There are some walking sticks and canes that typically work best especially ones with the brass handles, uh, ones with swords inside that are hidden are no good because a lot of people already know about those. But one thing about carrying a cane or a walking stick is you might need to just kind of improvise with a little bit of a limp. But if you're physically able, being able to get some kind of martial arts training, making sure that you're working out and you're staying in shape because sometimes you do need to go hands-on. Uh, even when you have a firearm or a knife. And so having that ability, it gives you more confidence and it allows you to have more ability and skill to get out of a really tough situation where you're defending your life. Guys, you need to be able to defend yourself. It's a basic human right. And of course, sometimes our hands are tied and we can't use the tools that are super effective, but at least this will give you some idea. And guys, if you find yourself in a self-defense situation, hopefully you'll kind of think outside the box because it's not always the gun or the knife. It can be a magazine. Guys, when it comes to prepping and survival, there's a lot of different information out on the web, and it takes a lot to try to find and source what's credible and what's not. Uh, one of the best sources that I know is Survival Dispatch Insider. They use some of the top names in the survival community that come together, and it is really just a, one of the best resources on the web. We upload one video that is exclusive to the Insider every week, and we're just glad to be a part. Uh, I'm going to have a link down below in the description. Uh, I think it's well worth checking out. 
Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. And a lot of people in the international community, and a lot of people in the uni and a lot of people in the Time to get down to business. Oh, you... okay, hold on, hold the.